You know what blows yeah. my face off? I've come to realize kindness from others to others. Okay. Something I realized recently is how excited I get when I see somebody do something. I watched, this actually happened. I watched like a young thug looking kid let an elderly woman. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of my podcast. Uh, I, I mean, I rarely have somebody on my podcast twice. There's just too many fucking people to get to. Uh, and let's call it what it is. I wanna be speaking all the time anyway. That's why I interrupt everybody. And so I'm even sad when I have a guest, let alone somebody who actually is fucking coming on for the second time. But however, uh, somebody I've admired for a long time, you'll, you know, you'll be able to go back, Google his name and my name and the same thing, you'll be able to see it the first time we were together. Thought that was a really strong episode of Ask Gary Vee. Um, since then, uh, some of you may know we started Speaking Bureau. Um, I, I stole my favorite uh, employee, favorite partner, this guy right there on Instagram, if you're looking, Zach Nadler, from CIA, and we started Vayner Speakers. And the gentleman that's with me right now is actually part of that world and at least from what I'm seeing on my p and I think he's probably happy and made a good decision. Super which makes happy, me, it's been awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, but more importantly, way more importantly, while we're here, uh, he has a new book out. I think you're nine. I think it's nine. Book. Um, I was commending the size. He made a brilliant statement, which is what he does about you should read it in one flight. I think that's right. I've just cut 800 pages of my next book out. And... Uh, and he's Whoa, here. 800 pages? I'm kidding, I'm, oh. I'm joking. Right? Oh. Actually, my next book, no joke, is most likely gonna be a textbook. Wow. So I've been so much in you know, what I see, yeah. and I'm actually trying to help learners that learn differently, that don't do what I do, like daily, thing, whatever, so nonetheless, that's what we're here for. Stillness is key. Ryan Holiday is in the building. Ryan, how are you? Thanks for having me, I'm awesome. Happy to be here. Uh, happy to have you here, excuse me. Uh, all right, what's, what's, when's the book coming out? Yesterday. So it came it's out done. yesterday. Yeah. We'll probably, it's live on Instagram, so go to Amazon, <laughs> type in uh, stillness is the key, buy it if you like me at all. Uh, but for everybody who's listening now, I'm probably putting this out in two or three days, what have you, it's obviously now on Amazon and all your favorite bookstores. Uh, what's it about, Rye? Well, it's about this idea of stillness, which might seem like you're a strange person to talk to about stillness, because you're the most active, hardworking person that I've not only met, but maybe heard of. But I actually think that people miss what stillness is. We think stillness is like a monk or it's meditation. Stillness is what you have to, what you need most when you're super busy and active, right? Do you, do you actually believe, because you're extremely thoughtful, that I'm wildly still? Wildly still, I don't know about that. But here's what I would say. Please. For all the activity and all the things you're doing, there's no way you could be as successful as you are if your mind was going the same speed that your body is. Like, like if a really great athlete in the in the craziest, busiest game, super slow. It's slow. The game has slowed down. They're seeing things that everyone else isn't seeing. When it's amazing you said that, because as a big sports fan, when that first hit the lexicon, years when I was nine, 10, 13, 17, I. When I heard great athletes talking about the game slowing down, yeah. when I tell you how slow everything feels for me, I often say to my friends that New York City's slow for me, <laughs> and they always freak, and they're like, you are a crackhead. Yeah. And, and what I'm actually saying is what you're actually talking about. Everything is so simple, everything is so slow, mm -hmm. everything is the same pattern over and over and over again. I, I'm scared to tell people how slow it feels yeah because and i think i think it's not just athletes i think great stock traders great artists great uh whatever what when you reach mastery in what you're doing not only does stuff slow down but it simplifies and so you're able to make connections that other people can't make you're able to control your emotions in a way that other people can't control them so when they're scared anxious worried frustrated you're like, this is what it is. Let's make the most of it. Like when I, I think about New England and the Super Bowl being down 28 to three, that is what stillness is. Even though Brian, they then Brian, in the, like Brian, the next 12 minutes. Brian. Listen, you know I love you. Of course. We did all the nice things up front. 
I'm aware that Coach Belichick is a fan of a prior book you've written, mm-hmm. but for you to have the audacity to drop that analogy in my face, for all the belief that you are one of the kindest, most thoughtful kids I know, I, I forever feel about you differently. Okay, okay, okay I'll let's take move it. on. Well, let's, let's, let's go abstract. Let's, more, let's think about a running back as the, the space opens up. Which is super narrow. Right, and on the one hand, you'd think they'd be worried about getting hit, you think they'd be worried yep. about the clock? No, all they've they've zeroed in on this thing they have. It's to It's funny do. you say that to make myself feel better, but it's actually true. I am, and I've watched a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers football because of just being in playoff runs and things of that nature. It, now that I'm watching every one of his runs, in in the short couple games that Le'Veon Bell has played for the Jets, I do not recall a run. This everything about his success in the NFL is now completely obvious to me. And it's actually completely predicated on what you said. His shuffling, his pitter patter at the line, which is outrageously patient, and his, it, I'm fascinated how he runs the ball. I am too. And look, let's zoom out. There's also, I think, an amount of stillness and, and let's call it confidence required to, de- to make the decision to hold out for a year, right? Like what, yes. what brings him to the Jets? Like, so imagine what people are saying about him on Twitter. What's sure, being said sure. in negotiations, what his family what is What fans saying. don't know about it, and his contract it, it, by most standards is okay for the holdout, but let's just go to a different place, even higher up to your point. Judgment is so rampant in our society. Sure. The people that cast judgment have envy of a professional athlete because let's just call it what it is. A shocking percentage of, of us would want to be doing that. Of course. However, people are so undereducated on what football players are going, football players are not basketball and baseball players. These are not guaranteed contracts. People are wildly confused by the actual math. And one hit, it's over. And one hit, it's over. And so that idea of being able to tune out all the stuff that's happening around you, to stick with a principle, or to to stick with what you think you need to do for your career. So Ryan, to, to, in my obsession, uh, I mean, I assume discounted, this is somewhere between 11 and 18 bucks on Amazon. Yeah. To make that, why for the masses that are listening to me right now, like, and us, when I say to you, like I, there are so many things I like about you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, it, and it's honestly, I think it's the things that I see similarities, we come at it differently, but I just like the way you, you do shit. When I ask you this question, because this is how I always think, why, why is thirteen dollars going to be really good for somebody on the other end? Sure. There's always a lot of answers. Yeah. But on hot take, what's your answer to that question? You mean generally with books, or you to, mean with this no, book? No, this book to what you know about my audience. Let's just think about it this way. Uh, I make good money. I consult for big sports teams. I consult. I give talks to yep. big organizations. I spent three years working on this thing. This is three years of me thinking, thinking every single day combing history, combing sports, combing literature for the strategies and insights for how the the greats of all time slow things down and get to a place where they're not jerked around by their emotions or jerked around by external noises. I'm sorry, I'm gonna change this interview a little bit. When you think about that, why, for you as a human, do you not take the process that I do, which is put out content along the way for free? Why does it manifest in this form for you? I do though. Like, so I, I oh, write great. every single day, I write an email called Daily Stoic that Love goes it. out to 200,000 people. Love it. And it's the biggest community of people Ryan, interested in ancient philosophy and when history. When are you starting the text version of it? The te- uh, I use the same company. I just signed up with the same company community? that you did. Yeah. Great. Uh, I, think, I think that's the, the I think that's the next, I think that's the next big you thing. Are, you're about to shit? Do you know what shitting your pants looks like? Unf- uh, I would say fortunately, no. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to think if I really, yes, yeah. I, I have ish. So <laughs> I, think a lot, I think a lot of people are in the like ish business of shitting their pants, right? <laughs> I think it's really hard if you're in a, like to be fully shit your pants. Well, like you all completely of us. let go or are unconscious. But I think a lot of us secretly, we don't want to admit it, but there's a lot of people in this room, on the stream, and in life are in the ish. <laughs> of shitting their pants business. So in that, I don't even know where I'm going anymore. Um, you're about to shit your pants when you see the data behind yeah. what texting sure. actually means in actual consumption. Well, what I'm, what I'm really into, so you, know, you write a book and, and, 
I think uh, the Daily Stoke book sold like 600,000 copies. It's in 30 languages. It's crushing. Huge number. But I like I sell that book to a publisher who sells that book to Amazon. Amazon's now responsible for 80% or so of book sales. Of so they, you basically sell no, your book to a middleman. That wasn't a joke. You think I, it should be higher? I, 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 no, I don't think it should. First of all, I don't right. think anything should. Second, your guess would be higher. No, I think. Oh. I mean, that's a pretty ridiculous it's number. Insane. It's a joke to everybody who competes against Amazon and selling of books. Of like, why the fuck have you guys not innovated in twenty years? It's terrible. It's. it's do you want to start it, a bookstore with me? I do. I think we could crush. I have an idea about it. I'll, I'll I actually it. have one too. Okay. Guys, this is how it happens. Yeah. <laughs> no, really. In th- like in two and a half years, you're going to see, and by the way, in 11 years, because it's just a thesis that then will be contextualized in 11 years. For, we have the general knowledge, yeah. what we put it into. There's a real, by the way, there's a huge play to go against an 80% market share of Amazon. Especially because Amazon, as awesome as they are, at this point doesn't really care that much about books. Like I bet the books make 1% they? of oh, AWS mean, revenue. I see, I see. Yeah. You mean as a, a yeah. 100%. They're in the place where the financial aspect of it won't dictate them to fast follow an innovation. Yeah, yeah. And so, so my, my point is, I sell a book to a publisher, they sell it to Amazon, Amazon sells it to customers. That works as far as books go, but the problem is I'm two, three steps removed from owning the relationship yeah. with the customer, yeah, which sucks. is the key thing. The only thing. And that, so with Daily Stoke, it's the email list. We sell products directly to the Got consumers. It. The Got margins it. are better. Got but it. more importantly, like when this book came out, I could send a flyer to 30,000 sure. addresses sure. in the US like yep. that because yep. I control the relationship My big reason for writing books, I, somebody asked me the other day, is because I don't want to be audacious in the way that I learn. Okay. I can't learn from reading this book. Right. Cannot. On the record. Yeah. You're not but a you're not a book guy. It's just not how I know. It's not my I'm clearly have reading disabilities that I'm not aware of because in the 80s we didn't really diagnose. But but others learn more like it's crazy to me that people send me emails that they've learned more in reading crushing it. Literally the the emails like, "Thank you for writing crushing it. I've watched every video you've ever put out." But it was crushing it that made me do that. And I'm like, motherfuck, really? Like, really? You know, and so like not being audacious on how one learns or consumes is such a framework of how I think about it. Well, authors, I think we get this sort of target blindness, right? Like an author thinks like, I'm an author, that's what I make. And then they're like, so I don't do podcasts, or I don't do emails, or I don't do social. You you sell ideas and you gotta, and I think think the huge thing, there's so many people now that are reading um, that, D- thought they didn't like books because it turns out they don't like reading books. They love audiobooks, right? They love ebooks. They love courses. They just didn't think they like this. Packaging matters. Yeah, of course. I love this. This is what I live and breathe for, but I can't let How many my books obsession. Do you read? A lot. Hun- hundreds of year uh, hundreds a year. Like this is but that's what I do. That's well, I remember like what that I'm from another on... conversation with. That's cool. So yeah. like you constantly are are you the kind that reads like three books at once and you go back and forth? Or are you like, all right I'm gonna read this book. I'm always reading one book with a pen. Like I was reading a book in the car on the way here, and I'll finish that tonight. I'll start another just one. So That's obvious me. Obvious to me how this all plays out. Like, like literally when you just said that, I was like, oh man, I would be in the car reading 800 comments. Yeah, it's just sure. so funny how everybody has. I love that. I love that. Okay, so that's it. So you just believe, hey, I. I myself believe that I'm good at synthesizing. Yeah. I'm good at hypothesizing. I spent three fucking years on this. And for the people that consume information this way, this should crush for them. I think so. And then what I've taken from you is like, okay, so my preferred medium is books. I get the book out. Now I have to break the book back down into podcasts, videos, emails, yes, social, because I got to reach back out to the people who consume in different mediums. What else can we educate people on about the subject matter or any anecdotal stories or anything funny about the book? So I think people think stillness is meditating. I don't meditate. It's not who I am. I have too much energy. It doesn't work for me. And so people go, because I don't meditate. There's so many other ways to get to stillness. You can journal. I think everyone should take a walk every day, right? Uh, I think people should. Walking is boring as fuck. Well, I do all my phone calls walking. I don't sit in my office. I, I walk. So I think you should do some You know what? I hate nature. <laughs> I've come to real. Got, you've got to love nature, no, man. Why? Because there's. Humans have I, evolved to have a connection with nature. Don't. No, no, no. I respect the fuck out of nature. 
but if you're not in it, you're, there, there are like objective health benefits to like experiencing things that are green. That your are not iPhone underwater. watch might be drilling cancer into your arm right now. Thank you. Like, sure. Yeah. But like where I'm really going is I don't like, actually, I love nature. Let me change my mind. Okay. I don't like seeing things. Okay. I have this deep not want to see. I don't give a fuck about the pyramids. Okay. I definitely don't like beautiful trees in the Pacific Northwest. I don't, that's right at you, Caleb. I don't care about like the, all the fucking New Yorkers go fucking wild when the sunset goes down some fucking avenue or street. Not, I have an inherent non-interest in seeing things. Okay. Like I like talking too, but like laying in my bed on with my, uh, you know, iPod, you know, AirPods is more interesting than like if the walking people can talk about the health benefits of the steps, and that's fine. A lot of people, I'm, I'm so happy. Like so many of my friends and relatives love a good fucking walk. Mm -hmm. Like just are like walking down the beach or like sure. walking on a nice little trail. Just genuine enjoy. Like my dad, if he sees a fucking skunk run across a fucking grassy knoll. He, my dad loses his fucking mind for a turkey popping up behind a good looking fucking oak. And I'm like, who gives a fuck? But what, what is that for you? Many things. I love watching people mm -hmm. interact with each other. That's like, where you get your energy. 100%, is, is like, connection. you know what blows yeah. my face off? I've come to realize kindness from others to others. Okay. Something I realized recently is how excited I get when I see somebody do something. I watched, this actually happened. I watched like a young thug looking kid let an elderly woman cut him in a line at that McDonald's at the Chicago airport. If everybody knows what I'm talking about, there's that, I, I love travelers. There's that one McDonald's that's right in the middle where you have to fucking like, so you know it. I, I was like there, I got stuck. I had a problem with a client. So I was like, you know, I'm walking which I love walking in an airport because I can watch people be nice to each other instead of a fucking, you know, fucking chipmunk. Like, my dad sees a chipmunk <laughs> run across, like, the and he's like, look, look. I'm like, what? Anyway, nonetheless, I watched the kid, thug life, thug looking kid. And I think, you know, I'm, I love thug life, so like, this was a thug looking, and say, ma'am, why don't you cut me? Yeah. And I can't stop thinking about it. It's been fucking 100 days. Yeah, that's the best. That's what I, that's my, that's what I okay. like. I like, I like watching people do the right thing by people. Okay. I don't get enjoyment out of like stuff. Like, I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> stuff. I, like there's literally a website. I don't know if the, the, uh, if the URL expired, Dustin, take a look. I think it's Gary V yeah, hate, Gary V hates mountains.com. Yeah. Yeah. I hate him. Do you, uh, do you have any hobbies? Yes. I love to garage sale. Yeah, I know that. But that's is that is that a hobby for you or is that just another extension of what you already do? It's another extension of what I already do. So, after I like the, the Jets. I like watching the sports Jets. Sports is your hobby. So, after the Second World War, Churchill wrote a book, which you would not I would say Churchill's the busiest you love most this fucker. most you successful know you, man you of the 21st him, century. Do you know that we've hung out 5 or 4 times? We never talked about Churchill. What are you talking about? I'm being dead fucking serious. When we no sat way. You ready? When we sat in the fucking theater at Summit, L, at Summit you brought up Churchill. Did I? Yes, you did. I'll All talk. Right. But I'm nonetheless, go ahead. He writes a book called Painting as a Pastime. And it's, it's a book about the power of hobbies. And he says that like the most important thing that a busy, powerful person can have, he says you got to have at least one or two or maybe three hobbies. Because you exhaust your mind doing the thing that more. you do. And you have to have an outlet for the energy because that's what makes you great. But it has to be different. You know what's funny about that? It's why I am so obviously a huge sports fan. I have no control and I'm completely, it's the, I'm the bizarro version of myself as a sports fan. I'm emotional. 94.7% mm -hmm. of my fights on Twitter have been with Patriot fans. 94.7. There's also nothing else you would do that takes four hours for yourself. Correct. Other than go to a Jets game. It's the complete reset of my life. Yeah. That Sunday resets everything. Mm -hmm. All 8,437 issues mean nothing to me during those four hours. Sure. I think, I think golf is actually, I, I don't like golf, but I actually get it because it's the only excuse that a CEO has to be gone I see out of the, the office for four I hours. See, that's right. It makes sense. And so you got to, I think people think like, 
I think music does it for people. Yep. I think video games do it. I, I mean, you, I see it all the time. You got to have your thing and you got to realize that that thing is actually helping you be better at your and main thing. And the extension of what I already do, I would argue when I really break down garage selling, it isn't, now that I'm going back yeah. and forth, the thrill of rolling up on a street with a fluorescent sign and not knowing what's about to be in that person's yard. Sure. Knowing that I might find a 1954 Green Lantern cereal box. Like the thrill of the hunt, mm -hmm. my process. I don't want, like, I want to try to buy the Jets more than I actually want to own them. Yeah. Like the thrill of the hunt is my high. Yeah, I don't think actually owning the Jets would be that fun. I think it's the. Well, it's going to be super yeah. fun when I beat the fuck out of the Patriots. Ryan. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm sure what you What else will. about the book? Uh, I got something for you. Are we wrapping up? Yeah. All right. The, so I was telling you about, about doing. D Rock. Uh, uh, Zach, you're on Instagram Live? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Zach, uh, you're looking at me? Thank you. Put in your phone number right now. We're about to call one of you to answer a question. So start throwing your phone numbers out. I'm gonna have Zach pin one and then read it to me. We'll call you in a minute or two. I got you the coin last time, but I thought, I know. You, I thought you'd like this. This is, this is what I wear. It's a signet ring. It's the same thing. Memento Mori, your favorite words. Remember you will die. I love this about you. Yeah. And then on the inside, it's from Marcus Really. So it says, you could leave life right now. And the idea is, this could be the last conversation. This could be the last day you show up to work. Be the last garage sale you go to. It could be your last Jets game. And so this idea of like, let's, let's fucking do it then. Let's be actually present. I genuinely present. believe in that shit. Me too. I believe in that shit the most. People think thinking of your mortality is morbid, but it, I think it's the, the way you embrace life fully. I think about it every day. Here's a crazy one. So the story. Genuinely, the for real. The Stoics say when you tuck your kids into into bed at night, this like this is crazy. I get it's controversial. You go, they might not be here in the morning. I think about it every day. I do too. I think about every single day having a massive tragedy. Mm -hmm. I think about very often my wife and kids in a car getting a tree landing on them and killing them all in one shot. And what is that? What do you do with that information? I act as if. Yes. Yes. So you don't. Hold on By the way, to that. That doesn't mean I'm like walking around and looking at them every minute. I fucking work all the time. It right. means that I act as if at the macro. Yes. I'm grateful. It yeah. leads to gratitude. Totally. And and it, it means oh, I don't need to rush this. I don't need to rush is through it, this so this I can get to my theory, phone. Is there is there a theory or is there tactical or is it a mix of two? Both. Yeah. Yeah. And is that important to you based on the way? Like I think a lot about that for me. I think the, way too many books are like here's an idea, figure it out. Right. And uh, you got to give an idea and then you got to tell people how to make that idea real. Something I've been really trying to push is like, watch what I'm doing. Like, I'm not necessarily going to make a white paper. That's like, that's true. not my sure. skill. And, and though we have done well, we put out a video recently, we did a deck. I really want people to watch. It's so right there. Yeah. It's right there. Just why did I post that? Right. Like, why? Sure, sure. No, I, nothing is by accident. Yeah. I'm not like, oh, fucking TikTok. Well, I think people do, they're like, give me the one, two, three step I plan to do this. Shit. And it's like, if it was that easy, there'd Everybody be no value in it. Everybody would do it. Yes, Fuck. of course. All right, Zach. Seven, seven, four. Hello? Nate? What's up? What's up? You're on the podcast with Ryan Holiday. Awesome, hey, man. Awesome. How are you guys? We're doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. What's your question? Um... <clears throat> Take on what? The take is on, thanks for calling brother. The take is, what do you think about playing video games for a living? I mean, if you're great Another at- Another phone call. <laughs> yeah. Soon to be fired phone guy. Go ahead. I, look, I think if it's, if it's what you feel like you were put on this planet to do, I think it's a great thing to do for a living. I, I just think oftentimes people are attracted to things like sports or video games or writing because they think it's easy. <laughs> and the totally. point is like- And there's fun. A, yeah, the point is actually- it's there, ridiculously hard. It's not only ridiculously hard, but because so it's so hard, only a very few amount of people get to do it, right? So unless you really were put on this planet to do it and you have a deep burning drive to do it, it's not gonna happen. The, the utter non-conversation around talent yes. is fascinating to me. Sure, yeah. Because it's, because it's crippling, right? Looking at somebody and saying, you're, you know, like we've, 
What do you think about entitlement? I think it's awful. Like, look, I hear from people that go, I think about writing a book. I'm like, okay, don't. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like, I have to write this book. If I don't, it will be physically painful. That's a reason to write a book, right? It's like, I have to start this company because I'm so angry that X is the current status quo. It, you gotta have a reason. Why do you think so many people live their lives so deeply in need of affirmation of others, including strangers? Well, I think evolutionarily we, we need it. Nobody wants to be outside of the tribe, but people, I think a lot of this is like, look, I, I think if I'm successful, my parents will like me. If I have lots of Twitter followers, like I can get dad's love. You know, there's a, yeah. I think it's a lot of it's a or childhood the girl, thing. Or the guy. Or yeah, you're trying to recreate where they were in high school or, you know, some it's some childhood thing there. They're uh, recapturing, which is a bad reason to do anything. What's up, AJ? Awesome. Did you speak to Ryan yet? No, I don't think we did. Good. Okay, good. Hey. AJV just walked in for a podcast piece. <laughs> anything good on Vayner Sports, AJV? We got some workouts tomorrow for our guys. There we go. Good. Putting in work. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, I want you to speak to AJ real quick. Cause, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just, there's so much interesting shit going on, bro. Of course. I'm so tired of judgment. I just People's like so. ability to, pe the judgment is on tilt right now. I was, People are obsessed with judging. I was, uh, I gave a, I, I was at Stand Up New York with James Altucher yep. last night. And uh, someone, I said something about Trump and this woman got up and she's like, I don't think it's fair that you're doing this. I'm not gonna make a Trump thing. What I, what I was saying, what I was so surprised by is that she gave a shit about my opinion. I was like, if you were up here and you were saying something that I disagreed with politically, you know what I would think about it? Nothing because I don't care what you do. And I don't care why, like, I don't get people who are upset about Le'Veon Bell's uh, contract negotiation. It's like, it's his life. You know what I mean? Like, I, people have these super strong opinions about things that don't affect them because it's a way of not having to look in the mirror about Politics your own shit. Politics is the one place that people make a connection point that A, this person has control. Yeah. You know, Le'Veon Bell to your sure. point, right? That's why that gets to the most extreme. Yeah. Right? Because people do think it has control. People do think there's collateral damage. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I have empathy for that. I, I think your point's taken though, and where you're taking it, we're we're just judging. The, listen, in the history of of the human race, anger and digging your heels in has never been a solution. And we're just fucking pulling apart on every fucking issue. Oh, it's a, ter it's a terrible strategy. When you actually look at people who have created profound change, it's always from love, a place of empathy, empathy love. <laughs> and, and what they usually, they don't go, look how awful these empathy people. Empathywines.com. They don't go, look how awful these people are. Look how terrible things are. They go, these are the principles we all share. Let's live up to them together. And here's how you might have gotten there. And yes. here's how I've gotten here. Yes. And let's joust on that. Yes. Not you're a piece of shit. Right. You're irredeemable. You're awful. Because you Based, can't come back from basically that. Basically, 98% of America is saying you're either a communist or a racist. Yes. Which is just not true. Yeah, of course not. Of ninety eight percent. And how do you, once you once you call someone that or once you put how it's do you come back from it? Don't come back from it. Yeah. You know, um, it's always good to see you. Amazing. Thanks for everything. It. Yo, you have a phone number? You want another one? Yeah, I'll sneak one more in. Three two one. Three two one. Three zero one. Two three four eight. I didn't know what the three two one area code was. More what is the three two one area code? I don't know. Anyone? Anyone? The comments are gonna come in right now. Who's the three two one? Fuck! If Keith I would. Castro. If I was fucking born in the 321, that would definitely be my like. Signal. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, <laughs> D, how are you? Um, I am awesome. First, I'm sorry, I'm just, I gotta tell you how awesome you are, bro. Like, I know you're probably tired of hearing that all day. I want to hear it like, all day. That's all my behavior. Oh, I'm only living I'm, for that. I'm the perfect person to tell you because <laughs> you're amazing. You're ridiculous. Thank you. Like, you just shoot these ideas, and it's like, look, this, I, I don't know if it's for you, but it might be. You know what I'm saying? So you shoot these ideas and it's up to us as the people to capture it and see if that idea is for you. I appreciate that. Please say awesome. please awesome. say hello to Ryan. Hello Ryan, what's going Hi. on? How you doing, Ryan? I'm, you sitting down with the with a very smooth person. Alright. <laughs> what's you, your question? So I I was interested in your book, but is there a way like um To get it for free? Yes, you can pirate it off all the sites. Do you, so why don't you go audio? Hey, do you, does, does you have like a, 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 a,
you guys have it in audio? Of course, of course. It's like 30% of the market at this point. That's what's up. That's how yeah. I read my book. Like, that's how I capture my information. Reading for Good. Me, Whatever you know, works. Right? Yeah. A hundred percent, D. D, where, where, D, real quick. D, right? Uh-huh. D, what, where's the three, two, one area code? Where's that number from? We're from Orlando, and Gary, we about to do something phenomenal, and we want you to be a part of it. Well, then email me. It's Gary at Bainer Media. At, well, do it again. If you give, if you give up three, to, if you give up after emailing me, how many? How many? D, I'm gonna look, D. Don't lie because I'm gonna put you on fucking blast. How many times have you? Yo, you put me on blast. Check your Instagram messages. Check your Twitter. Check everything. I love it. You posted in the last week. Yo, guarantee to be there. I guarantee. Go check my page. I put you on. I think I post everything I post. I make sure, even if it's not about you, I make sure I post you on it. So you can be like that. You're trying to hack me, D. You're tagging me on shit that isn't even relevant. You're. D- All year? You know what yeah. that means? Um, no, year, I'm listening. Year. Educate me. Two years ago, two years ago, you said, you said Oh, D, I I do know who you are. D, I know exactly who you are. You're talking, I, you're talking, you mean when I'm talking about putting out a, a song every single day? Yes, we're doing D, that 2020. D, and D, I, hold on, D, let me get in here. Let me get in here. <laughs> D, let me get in here. I have good news for you. I actually know exactly who you are. Your photo is a real up close, like your content has your face real up close. Yes, yes. I'm listening. I'm you listening, see, Caleb. I'm doing my stuff. No, no, I'm not only are you doing your best. You, I'm hungry, and we're going we gonna to do this. 2020 is that year I'm telling you. All right, you. D, you're going to have to answer a very important question. This is now the moment, right? Because you got through this call. I don't know how you trick Zach. Uh, you've done such a good job that I know exactly who you are. So think about that. Now you so got to deliver. You, here's the moment. This is going to be the variable if it happens or not. Be very thoughtful here. Are you an Orlando Magic fan? Uh, listen, I'm going to be completely honest. I am not. <laughs> That's good. Now, step two of this game. Who do you like? Gary Vee. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, have me call this crazy woman tomorrow. <laughs> Zach will give you the number. D, I'm gonna speak to you tomorrow. I fucking love you. I love you too, Gary, bro. I look forward to working with you. I okay. swear, man. I, uh, me too. Thanks, D. Well, that was an interesting way to end this episode. Good that job, Zach. That was amazing. Ryan, thanks for being on the show. Everybody yeah, who's watching, it. and more importantly, everybody who's now listening, and I'm sure somebody's listening to this two and a half years after this came out. I think one of the things that I admire about Ryan is this just his fucking brain, that's just the truth. And, and what I know about that, that means without knowing. And this is like the only cosigns I've ever given books. If you read the seven or 10 times I've ever done it, I'm saying it about the person, not the book, because I'll never read the book. What I can guarantee you is, if you're listening to this on April 17th, 2094, you should go pick up the whatever version of how you consume communication at that point in the it's world pill is. Then. Yeah. yeah, please swallow the pill. It's called the stillness is the key. <laughs> See ya, Brian, thanks for Thank being on.